My name is Donald Stuckless, and this is my wife, Bonnie, and we are so thankful that the gospel is powerful enough to save all kinds of people. We were missionaries in Colombia, South America, Panama, and Costa Rica before going to Spain in 1984, and uh, made plans to go up to the northern part of Spain to plant a church. Santiago de Compostela is a beautiful city, a very historical city. We attended a church conference in Madrid, and we met two people that had worked for two years in Santiago de Compostela. Trying to start a church. Trying to start a church, and they said we didn't even have one single convert. We were quite enthusiastic, but it soon appeared that this was a very hard place. The methods that we had been taught and that we had used in Latin America with great success, it wasn't being effective. I taught English. Everybody wanted to learn English, and all the younger people did. And uh, then I taught Bible correspondence courses, and I just made friends everywhere I went. With all of these outreaches, we really did not have anybody coming to our church or to our center. When you're not seeing anyone come to the Lord, it seems to me, and it seems to everybody usually, that you're not getting anywhere. One day when Don went to the mail, and he usually spent about, well, four, three or four hours. Well, a considerable <laughs> amount of time, but people wanted to consult with me. And so um, he'd be gone for a long time to the mail, like he said, consulting with people. And this one day I read from the Bible, Luke chapter 14, verse 21. And it's a story of the man who prepared a great feast and invited everybody to come. And they all gave an excuse. And it says in verse 21, the servant returned and reported to his master what they had said. His master was angry and told him to go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the city and to invite the beggars, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. But even then, there was still room. When I read that, the words that jumped off the page, and I have them underlined in my Bible, go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the city. And I thought, wow, why don't we just do what Jesus said? And Jesus, he told us right here what we had to do. And I could hardly wait for Don to get home so I could tell him. So we decided that that was what we were going to do. The drug addicts met behind the cathedral in a big plaza there. And they would shoot up and buy their drugs and so forth and just live that kind of a life. And so one day uh, we went down there and you have to remember that this is a place where you know, they, they, they're just lying around and then they, after they use these needles, they go and they see people getting money out of the bank, maybe, out of the bank machine and uh, coming out and then they come up to them and they threaten them. And so uh, with, uh, well, I'm going to stick you with this uh, HIV needle uh, if uh, you don't give me some money. When we got to the plaza, of course, we wanted to invite them home for dinner. And so we went up to them and uh, I said to them, we're Canadians and we live here now and uh, we would like to invite you home for lunch, but we can't take all of you, but we could take two at a time. And they started to laugh. They said, oh lady, you don't want us home for lunch. They said, our parents won't even let us come home for lunch. You don't know who we are. And we said, yes, we know who you are and we still would like you to come home and have lunch. And so if two of you would like to come, we would be so happy I made a really nice dinner. And we convinced two to come with us. Now we didn't realize that we were entertaining some of God's choicest servants. Oh, how wonderful it is as we look back. But at the time, they weren't too desirable to be around. <laughs> The first drug addicts we took into our home to live with us, Alfredo and Jose, they were chronic heroin addicts. They were HIV positive. They both did have AIDS later. And um, we took them in. They, they made a commitment to us. They said to lock us in and stay with us all the time because we'll try to get out of the apartment. So we had to watch them constantly. When it I was went a, to the mail, they were with me. We went and had coffee at a coffee shop. And uh, you called them your bodyguards. People would ask me, who are these people? I'd say, they're my bodyguards. Guardas de espalda. <laughs> 
We sent Valentin many times to rehab centers and he would come back and fall again and again and again. And uh, one day I took him home and I always made sure that he greeted Maria so he would be, somebody would Make protect sure him. Make sure that she was so there. That was, she was home. And so when he got out of the car, he said, hi, Maria, and Maria wasn't even there. And I didn't know it, but when I got home, I had an uneasy feeling that maybe something was wrong. So I called his sister and I said, I have a bad feeling about Valentin. Would you please go? Anita. Uh, yeah, would you please go to the plaza where the drug addicts meet? And I, I'll meet you there. So we both hurried as fast as we could to the plaza. And there he was sitting with the rest of the drug addicts. And we were so sad, we went up to him and he said, oh, what are you doing here, Bonnie? And I said, what are you doing here, Valentin? <laughs> and uh, he said, I'm fine, don't worry about me, I'm just fine. And his sister went over and pulled up his sleeve of his shirt and there was blood on his arm. And I said, Valentin, you are a dirty liar. He came back with us and uh, he's, we got to our house and he said, what do I have to do now, Bonnie? We were in the kitchen. I said, Valentin, you need to get down on your knees and repent. And so he got down on his knees and he cried out to the Lord and tears and we were all crying. One day, Maria, Valentin's wife, called Felix and said, Valentin wants to go back to the streets, Felix, please come quickly. So he went. Later, he called me and, and Don and he said, you'll have to come, I can't handle him. So we went. When we got there, he was belligerent. He was... Unruly. Yes, defiant. And uh, he just didn't want anything to do with us at that moment. I said to Maria, his wife, you might as well make some lunch, Maria, because this is going to be a long siege. And um, so she did. And then we, we were trying everything, saying everything, counseling him, doing everything, and nothing worked. Finally, I said, Valentin, I'm going to take this chair and put it in front of the door, the only door that's leading out of your apartment. And I'm going to sit on this chair for an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year, however long it takes. I'm going to sit right here on this chair in front of this door. And if you're going to the street, you're going to have to walk over my body. And uh, he didn't say anything. In a few minutes, he looked up and he started to laugh. And he said, really, Bonnie, you're not going to leave? And I said, no, I'm not going to leave. And in, in a few minutes, he said, it's gone. I'm OK. It's gone. The temptation's gone. God's so good. And to our understanding, it has never come back. He now is the pastor of our first church in Santiago de Compostela. And he's a wonderful young man. And his dear wife, Maria, they're a beautiful couple. Prostitutes, alcoholics, and drug addicts, God was using these type of people. The people nobody else wanted. That's it, the people no one wanted. When you win these young drug addicts to the Lord, right away, their parents are saying, what did you do to my young boy or young girl? We always said, we didn't do anything. God did it all. So before we knew it, we had all these mothers coming and they were getting saved. And it was just a beautiful experience. We now have six churches in Galicia that have been pioneered. They've pioneered three more since we left. And um, things always go better after I leave. <laughs> I love heroin and cocaine addicts. I love addicts of any description. Really, I think they're some of God's favorite sinners. All of these things have happened because the Lord led us to the alleys and the back streets of Santiago de Compostela in Spain. He can do it anywhere and he will do it because God loves to see people change and to become new creatures in Christ Jesus. That is where it all is.
Do it. That's the way.